Hey guys, welcome back to another 5-Minute Analyst. Today we're going to be reviewing a use case where their client has customers and then they have locations. And right now their customers are not attributed to their locations appropriately. So the way that they want to achieve this, and you can do this a number of ways, uh, whether it be by revenue, usage. Uh, today we're going to be looking at distance and or uh, drive time. So what we have is we have two files. Um, one is the locations and the format of some type of identifying uh, individual branch and then their Latin long. And same thing with the customer, some key that defines unique customer and then the customer's latitude and longitude. So the key issue here is that there are there is no relationship, right, between the customer and the individual location. So we need to create one. So the way that I'm creating one is just to create uh, kind of a, a pseudo relationship by creating a field called join, and giving it a value of one on both sides of um, what will be ultimately a join. So every location will get an ID of one and every customer will get an ID of one. This will allow us to join them together later and evaluate each individual um, relationship. So since we already have uh, Latin longs, so we can create points. So if you bring in the create points from the spatial tools, what it will let you do is it'll let you create a, a geospatial point based off latitude and longitude. So you bring those in to your workflow and you specify the latitude and the longitude. I went ahead and prefixed the latitude and longitude since I had two different sets. I have BR long, BR lat for my individual branches, and then I have memlat, memlong for my customers. And what we're doing is we're joining that information together on our join field that we created. What this is going to do is create a many-to-many -many relationship. So we're going to have 6,300 uh, records approximately times 9 in our output, which is what we would expect because basically for every one record we now have 9. So once we have this, um, this is basically each row is a is a possible relationship between an individual branch location and an individual member. So as you can see, the members are duplicated, but the branch numbers are unique, which is what we would want. And we go back to our spatial tools and we grab distance, we pull distance in, and now we can evaluate it a couple different ways. You pick the point that you're starting from and the point that you're ending on, and then you can pick distance or drive time and distance. So to me, distance is a little bit, um, you know, out there because if it picked a linear uh, distance between two points, you can't necessarily get there on that linear path unless you're uh, in a helicopter. Not even in an airplane can you get there in a very linear path. So drive distance or drive time makes significant more sense from um, a convenience standpoint, which is really what you want to understand. What, how convenient is it to go here versus somewhere else? So we add this tool and we run this workflow and what we end up with is something very interesting. Right? We have each individual branch and member relationship and then we have a series of drive distance in miles for each one. So now we know what the drive distance is for every single possible combination of customer to branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a YXDB. That way I don't have to rerun all these spatial operations when I'm actually trying to sort and find the value that I want. So I save this as a YXDB, I come over to this additional workflow and I'm bringing in that same file that we ended with before, right? We have each row being a branch member uh, relationship and we're filtering it because some of these individuals live so far away that the 90 minute buffer that we put um, back here, sorry, over here, 90 minutes, it just doesn't matter. They still can't capture some of these drive times because they're just on the other coast. So we're going to filter for null because when we start to order them, you don't want to be ordering null values because it's going to throw off uh, the actual first value, right? If null, if null comes up first and you're going to be assigning them and really you shouldn't be, you should skip that and you should move on to the next real drive distance. So I'm filtering out for nulls 
and then we're ascending, and we're ascending by two columns. We're ascending by the individual record, which is identified by the SEER key, right, the individual, and then the drive distance in miles, and we're sorting both of them by uh, ascending order. So for me, Nate will show up nine times with nine different drive distances in order from smallest to largest. Now, that's useful, right, and it'll look something like this, where we have this individual, and we have nine, distant, nine different drive distances, but this isn't really what we want. What we want to do is select this, and we want to do it programmatically. And the way to do that is to grab your sample tool from preparation, um, grab your sample tool, pull that in, and you're basically selecting the first record, right? This is what we're doing, selecting the first record, and grouping it by the, the member key, which basically means it's not just going to grab the first record for this data set, it's going to grab the first record and loop through every time it sees the new SEER key. So what we end up with is something that looks like this, where we have, and this is what we just looked at, only one representation of this individual with the new branch that they should be assigned to because that branch member or branch customer relationship has the shortest drive distance miles uh, between them across the nine possibilities. So again, this same approach could be used for usage, could be used for revenue. This could, this uh, value right here could easily be a number of visits to, to per location, or it could be revenue by product, let's say. So there are a lot of applications of the same exact methodology. We just happen to be using um, geospatial data, and we just happen to be doing it by drive distance miles. So our output, it's very skinny, and it basically says this person should belong to this branch. Now you take this information and you can go back and join it with your base information and build out your customer data set with newly allocated branch to customer relationships based on um, purely the drive distance in miles.